So let's say you bought an Xbox 360 in 2024, whether it's for the very first time or you're simply looking for some nostalgia. The question is, where do you start and what do you buy? Here's the challenge. 10 games under $10, good variety of genres, you're starting a new collection, and lastly, overall completion, since we are an achievement friendly channel here. So let's look at the 10 games I came up with that you should buy and play right now without breaking your bank. Starting with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. This has a fantastic single player campaign, great characters and overall story. I would consider this one of the best shooters of all time, definitely one of the best that I've ever played. And if you've never played Call of Duty, which is probably hard to imagine, this is the game I would start with over any of the others. Uh, all the missions, it doesn't feel like a copy-paste structure, it's got lots of variety and uh, tons of memorable moments as well. And if we're looking at the completion, the only thing you're looking at here is like veteran difficulty and then the infamous Mile High Club as the toughest. Otherwise, it's pretty standard list for a shooter. Next one is Bioshock. I somehow passed up on this game when it was first released. And later on, I actually played Bioshock 2 first and realized I needed to go back and connect the story. So that's why I recommend starting with this one first, but they're all, in general, really great games. And this, uh, this one has lots of twists and turns, and it really is the true definition of a story-driven first-person shooter. It has a creepy atmosphere and amazing characters, and the world itself is unlike anything else you'll see. And in terms of the completion, Nothing too taxing here, really just the audio diaries as collectibles, which adds a ton to the story, and then you have to do a hard playthrough. It is a masterpiece, and you should play this. Following that, we have Assassin's Creed 2. This has a great open world setting in Italy, where you get to traverse famous buildings and areas and relive moments from history. And I actually realized after going back to record gameplay that this is actually... <laughs> a very fun and silly Assassin's Creed game. It's almost like we forgot how those were. Um, tons of memorable characters in this one, and the story is great, and it is the start of a trilogy. So I can say you can easily skip the first Assassin's Creed game, as, as it's a little bit boring and repetitive, but absolutely go back and play that one when you're done with the Ezio trilogy, just to get more backstory. But I would recommend starting with the Ezio trilogy if you've never played Assassin's Creed. In terms of the completion, nothing too special here. The only thing at the end, once you finish the story, is just getting all the collectibles. And I think we all know those damn feathers. Next, we have Batman Arkham Asylum. I don't believe I had played many or any good superhero games until this game. And I was actually surprised just how good it really was. I would consider this kind of a near-perfect game in terms of length, story, engagement, gameplay and pacing just doesn't seem like there's ever a dull moment in this game even the collectibles are fun to be honest i'm a huge fan of batman the animated series and they included all the main voice actors from the show which made the game even better and in terms of the completion getting to 100 percent will require some skill with challenge mode uh getting all of the combat and predator challenges but story achievements are both enjoyable and really not too difficult even on hard and here we have Portal 2. This game has a fantastic single player campaign. It also has a great sense of humor, to be honest, and really fun puzzles as well. This has to be one of my favorite co-op games since Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. And by the time I played Portal 2, I had even done Halo, Gears, and Borderlands. This was just so much fun in co-op, honestly. You should give it a try. And in terms of a completion, the hardest thing is actually getting a co-op partner for that portion of the game and all the achievements related to it. They are much tougher than the, than the campaign, but it's really a rewarding experience once you get it done. So you'll have a lot of fun with it though. So highly recommend it overall as a good co-op package and a campaign. Next up is Deus Ex Human Revolution. I don't know if it's right to say that it's a bit of an underrated gem, although it did get rated very highly. But in my opinion, maybe one that isn't talked about enough these days. This game has a good mix of action RPG elements, stealth, and shooter. So at the time I, I played it, I had not played anything like that before. So I was very intrigued and loved every minute of it. So And, and it turned out to be one of my favorites from this generation. And in terms of the completion, 
really the the stealth achievements will be the hardest for the overall completion so it will require a lot of patience but it's certainly not a game you should pass on due to that so highly recommend you check this game out if you haven't um, this is a really really good game and here we have prince of persia the forgotten sands i've always been a huge fan of prince of persia and if i could trade every third assassin's creed game for a new prince of persia instead i definitely would uh, I like this one better than the previous Prince of Persia game on the 360 since this feels more like the OG Xbox games, so it's more of a continuation of those. Um, and it's easy to play and get into, it's a really fun action adventure game. You get to rewind time, hack and slash, you know, which all those things are, are always fun and, and great to do. Uh, in terms of the completion, it is a very easy game and a lot of it is through natural progression of just playing the game. You know, and honestly, I think most most games should be like that to give an overall experience as well with both the game and doing achievements as well. But overall, though, it's a really fun game, and I, I recommend checking this one out. Next, we have Rayman Origins. And uh, <laughs> you'd think at this point that I'm a Ubisoft fanboy, judging by the uh, backdrop here and the amount of Ubisoft games I've talked about. But the fact is, they made far better games before, and especially around the time of the games that I'm mentioning in this video. So the same as Prince of Persia, I'm really sad that they don't make many games like this anymore. This has to be one of my all-time favorite platformers. It is so good, it's so fun. It's also challenging as well, which I like. And also, I know you can get most of this particular game as a package with Rayman Legends, but there are major differences and you should play this one first because it's amazing by itself. And then you can go play the Rayman Legends later on. Uh, in terms of the completion though, this is a very skill based game, so you have to practice obviously. Uh, to get 100%, uh, you need to do speed trophies, medallions, collectibles, and of course play through the whole, all the levels. But it feels so rewarding once you get the, all that done and you get the 100%. So that's my favorite thing about platformers is to just get 100% and get everything the game requires of you. So, But amazing game and uh, you should definitely check this one out. And here we have Alan Wake. I love this game. It's one of the main reasons I stayed with the Xbox 360 once I played it, due to being more aware of the exclusive, so to speak. And it's also a reason I really started liking horror games. So it has intense gameplay, fantastic story, even if it can get a little bit confusing at times. But that's the whole mystery of it, right? So, uh, and in terms of the completion, you're looking at like a nightmare playthrough, some speedrun achievements for certain areas, and a ton of collectibles, which we all love and enjoy, right? Gotta get that coffee boost. And last but not least, we have Dead Space 2. This is probably my all-time favorite horror game. While I could have easily chosen the original, this game just felt more polished to me. The pacing and the tension is just incredible, not to mention the improvement in gameplay. And I would say similar to Alan Wake, I wasn't really into horror games and had hardly played any Resident Evil in the past. I have been a fan of horror games ever since I played Dead Space 2. And I really hope they make a remake someday like they did to the first one. In terms of completion, the campaign achievements aren't really too bad, but the overall completion is probably one of the toughest on this list due to the hardcore playthrough. And if you've ever done it, you will never forget the opening sequence of that game for the rest of your life. So that's the list of 10 games under $10 to start your collection. And I think we made it in about 10 minutes as well. So if you want to check out more of our videos, this one right here is a good place to start. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.